Hello everyone. Today we are going to explore an alternative method for companies to raise money without diluting control for the existing shareholders. Who are the existing shareholders? The common stock shareholders. So if the company wants to raise money, they need more money, but they don't want to issue new stocks. Why not? Because the current owners don't want new owners coming into the company. Is there an alternative? Yes. And that option is called preferred stock. So preferred stock is another class of ownership in a corporation. So we have common stock and we have preferred stock. Now bear in mind, in the real world, we could have common stock class A, class B, class C, and we could have many types of preferred stock. However, preferred stock, they will have a higher claim on the company's asset and their dividend is guaranteed. So they do have certain preferences. That's why they are called preferred stock. Now, also, they lose certain rights. One of the rights that they lose is the right to vote. Therefore, they're not true owners. They have no saying in the company. But when we pay dividend, they get their money first. In case of liquidation, in case the company go out of business, they have a priority over common shareholders. So those are basically the main, main, not the only, the main two dividend preference. Now, when we issue common stock, we we have to do a journal entry, debit cash, credit common stock, credit paid in capital. The same concept applies to preferred stock. When we issue preferred stock, we debit cash, great. We debit preferred stock rather than common stock, and we have a new account called additional paid in capital preferred stock. Basically the same, and you will see that as I work the example. Also, what you need to know is preferred stock is like a bond in terms of, uh, if it's a structure, it's a contract-based agreement. Contract-based means what? It means you can put anything in that contract. So preferred stock, they come with diff they come in different flavors. We have many of them: cumulative, non-cumulative, participating, non-participating, many type of preferred stock because it's a contract base. Therefore, we will also familiarize ourselves with the different types of preferred stock. It matters because depending on your preferred stock. Sometime you might receive more dividend than you should. Sometime you might lose some years of dividend, so on and so forth. This is what we will discuss and work a problem with the journal entries to help you understand the process step by step. At the end of this recording, we will work a multiple choice question from Farhat Lectures to consolidate the knowledge and we'll wrap it up. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, FarhatLectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. One of the unique feature of preferred stock is the dividend rate and the rate preference. Remember, if you have a preferred stock, you get your dividend first. It's not only that. Companies typically declare how much you will be getting in preferred dividend. In other words, the dividend rate, the dividend amount, either the rate will be stated or the amount itself, you will know this amount. It's a fixed percentage of the stock bar value if it's a percentage or they will tell you the amount. For example, if a company issue preferred stock with a par value of 100 and they say the dividend rate is 7%, what does that mean? It means the par value is 100, your dividend rate is 10%. It means every time 
you get dividend you're gonna get seven dollars notice you know the amount of the dividend the amount of the dividend is known and this is important because if you own common stock that doesn't happen until the board of directors declare the dividend it will, and they will tell you how much you will be getting well depending on how much left after they pay the preferred so the preferred get gets their money first and they know exactly and this makes the preferred attractive to investors who are looking for stable return because they know exactly how much they will be getting how much they will be getting so from an accounting standpoint recording the issuance of preferred stock is basically the same as common stock but let's look at an example we don't want to assume anything here so a company issue 5,000 sold 5,000 shares of common stock at 102 with a they have a par value of a hundred well how much cash will they receive they sold 5,000 shares at 102 they would receive cash 500 and 10,000 will debit cash that much we will credit preferred stock just like how we credit common stock the number of shares times the times the par value therefore preferred stock again which is it's going to be think of it as the equivalent of common stock is half a million and anything that's left which is 10,000 we call it paid in capital preferred stock just like we have a paid in capital common stock and just like we have a common stock we have preferred stock and paid in capital preferred stock so this is the entry this is the entry to issue stocks which is basically the same except labels are different as issuing common stocks so instead of common stock the credit goes to preferred stock along with a separate entry to paid in capital and excess of par and this is excess of par preferred stock now preferred stock they come in many many different flavors different type of preferred stock because it's based on a contract so we have cumulative preferred cumulative preferred is what cumulative preferred is you remember that seven dollars here that we said you are being promised let's go back to that seven dollars okay the seven dollars here that you are being promised if the stock is cumulative if it's a cumulative preferred it means any unpaid dividend must be paid before any dividend is paid to common shareholders it means if if, if for a particular year they happen not to have no profit and they miss that year they still owe you that seven dollar per share so let's say a company has a seven percent dividend rate but they missed on paying dividend for two consecutive years because they did not have a profit in the third year when the profit returns they have to go back and pay you year one year two before they pay even year three so you have a cumulative it means the dividend will accumulate over the years well if we have a cumulative we have non-cumulative non-cumulative means what it means any unpaid dividend do not accumulate so if the company misses a year of dividend well guess what these are lost forever they're not gonna go back and pay you this money and bear in mind that year one and year two they're not liability they don't record them as a liability just they make a note of it but it's never a liability non-cumulative is simpler from an accounting perspective there's no need to track any unpaid dividend but obviously investors would prefer cumulative it's less attractive to risk averse investors because once dividend is skipped they cannot claim it later so those are types of dividend cumulative and non-cumulative now why do you have to know those because when we compute the book value of a stock the book value of the company stocks we have to know whether they have any cumulative or non-cumulative also dividend comes in very in many flavors another type of dividend is participating versus non-participating what's the difference between the two let me let me simplify it for you do you remember when we said you are promised seven dollar per share that's it you are you are limited to that if your your preferred is non-participating if your preferred is participating you are promised seven dollars then you are promised more if there's any money left or if we paid a certain amount to the common shareholder so you can get more than seven dollars there are additional variation of preferred stock when it comes to how much dividend the holder can receive with participating preferred investors can receive dividend beyond more than the stated rate of we're working with seven percent 
more than that. So once the common shareholder receives dividend equal to the amount paid to the preferred, then they have to go back to the table and any money remaining that they want to distribute is distributed to the common and to the preferred. So the preferred shareholders, first they get their money first. So the money goes first to the preferred. Preferred shareholder gets their money first. Second, goes to the common. But under participating, once they received a percentage that's equal to the preferred, any money left will have to go back. Some of it goes to the preferred, some of it goes to the common. You are participating. This means that the preferred shareholders can benefit more in a highly profitable year. Simply put, if the company makes a lot of money and they wanted to declare dividend, they will get more. Non-participating preferred, you guessed it. Non-participating, you are limited to that fixed or stated dividend amount or rate. You don't share in any extra profit beyond that fixed amount. Most preferred stock in the real world are non-participating. But participating do exist and they offer additional upside for investors. Now you might be saying, why would the company issue a participating? Because if they want to entice you, if they want to give you the incentive to do what? To buy their stock, they will make it participating. They will make it participating. As I mentioned, preferred stock comes in various, various flavors. Let's take a look at this question that, that tests us on that. Which of the following classes of stocks prohibit the preferred stock from receiving dividend for any year that the dividend are not declared? So this stock, if the dividend is not declared, you don't get your money. Is it callable preferred? We did not talk about callable, but that's another type of stock. Callable means the company can buy the stock anytime from you, at any time. At a premium though, but they can pay it. B, non-cumulative preferred. Well, what does that mean? It means the stock, if they don't pay you dividend, they're not going to pay you in future years. So which of the following classes prohibit the preferred? stock from receiving dividend for any year that they are not declared. This will prohibit you. If it's non-cumulative, you don't get anything. B is better than A. Participating preferred. Remember, participating means you can participate beyond a certain percentage of your stated rate. That's not, that's not, that's not what they're asking. Cumulative preferred. Cumulative preferred is what? Is what? It's the opposite of the question. The cumulative preferred, even if it's not declared this year, they'll have to pay you later. So it's not cumulative. The type of stock that they are looking for, the preferred stock that prohibit you if the dividend are not declared is called non-cumulative. They don't accumulate. Once you lose that dividend, you lose it forever. Now, why would the company declare dividend? Because they have no profit. Or if they have a profit, they don't want to distribute the profit. That's their choice. But they don't want to declare dividend. And that's it. And if you have non-cumulative, Thank you and goodbye. Forget that year. What should you do now? Well, go to Farhat Lectures. Work multiple choice questions. Look at additional lectures. Look at additional resources to help you, whether you are an accounting student or studying for your professional certification. Invest in yourself. That's the best investment you can make. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.